Welcome to Ottawa First Christian Church. We are here today, Steve Borkowski and I, Steve's videotaping. Couldn't do Facebook Live, it wouldn't work for some reason, but this is going to be posted on, on Facebook on, for the church, and so please look later and worship with us then. We are here because of the coronavirus, because of COVID-19. No one is worshiping for this Sunday and next Sunday. We do invite you to worship with us by video, and we invite you to come and to lift up your prayers as we pray also. Many announcements here. There's nothing going on at the church for the next two weeks, at least to the end of the month. We pray that we'll be able to get together again for Palm Sunday and Easter Sunday. We pray for those times. But until then, we are called as Christians to take care of each other and to care for each other and to help each other in need. And this is one of those times. I know we're supposed to social isolate, but we're also called to reach out and help as we can. So please do, whether at a grocery store or running errands or whatever it may be, you're invited to do that. You will also be invited if you want to come to a Bible study this uh, Wednesday and Tuesday. Tuesday at 1 o'clock, we will have a conference call. Please call, write this down, 1-917-900-1022. The conference call ID is all numbers. It's 4699-1869. So we will have two Bible studies next week, this coming week, Tuesday at 1 and um, we invite you to do that. Um, if you have any questions, call me at 515-210-9775. We're just having one meeting, and we can do a conference call on, for Disciples Care Group on Wednesday, also at 6.30 as well. So, um, this is going to be a different type of worship. Uh, we have many people to keep in our prayers, our leaders who are trying their best to help us get through this. We pray that the, all the manufacturing of all the goods that are needed to support the, the doctors and the nurses and all those who are on the front line of fighting this virus, we pray for them. We pray for all the, the homebound and nursing homebound people who are isolated as well. We pray for all of us. All of us need prayer because it's not easy. It's not easy to isolate ourselves when we're a very social people. We want to be connected to each other. And hopefully through, through electronics, through social media, and other ways we can stay connected. Call somebody and let them know that you're thinking of them and praying for them. That is a way for us to live our faith and to help others in need. We have many prayers. I have prayers for the Claussen family. Uh, Reverend John Claussen, my good friend up in Iowa at Park Avenue Christian Church, died this past week. And my prayers are with his family and with his church, Park Avenue, my home blood church where my father was ordained and my grandfather was uh, elder emeritus there. There are other people who have passed away also recently and this is not a good time to die because we all can't get together and celebrate their lives. So our prayers are with our family and friends. We pray, dear Lord, as we lift up our prayers, let us pray. Gracious and loving Lord, it's not easy during this time when we are called to isolate ourselves. Help us to take it seriously. Help us to realize that this is real. This isn't fake. This isn't made up. This is real. Help us to realize that this disease, is, this virus, is something that we can overcome if we all work together and cooperate and do what people, the leaders, want us to do to isolate ourselves and not share the virus with each other. If we know somebody who has it, we lift them up to you. We pray for the doctors and the nurses who are on the front line to bring care. We pray for them. We pray that the manufacturers who will give them the tools and instruments to bring healing. We pray for the scientists who are developing that, the, the, the vaccine. We pray that it's sooner than later. We also pray, dear Lord, for our leaders who are trying to help us, the doctors who are telling us how legitimate this is. May we listen to them. Lord, we pray for our soldiers and for our veterans. 
We pray for all those who need prayers. We lift our prayers up to you as we pray the prayer your son taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. <coughs> well, let us sing. One of the songs I chose to sing this, this morning, it's called, There's Something About That Name. Jesus, 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 there's just something about that name. Master, Savior, Jesus, like the fragrance after the rain. Jesus, 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 let all heaven and earth proclaim. Kings and kingdoms will all pass away, but there's something about that name. Amen. Today's scripture comes from John 9, 1 through 41. It's a long one, but it's an important one. As he went along, he saw a man blind from birth. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Neither this man nor his parents sinned, said Jesus. But this happened so that the work of God might be displayed in, this li in his life. As long as it is day, we must do the work of him who sent me. Night is coming when no one can work. While I am in the world, I am the light of the world. Having said this, he spit on the ground, made some mud with the saliva, and put it on the man's eyes. Go, he told him, wash in the pool of Siloam, which means sent. So the man went and washed and came home seeing. His neighbors and those who, were, who had formerly seen him begging asked, Isn't this the same man who used to sit and beg? Some claimed he... he some claimed that he was. Others said, no, he only looks like him. But he himself insisted, I am the man. How then were your eyes opened? They demanded. He replied, the man they called Jesus made some mud and put it on my eyes. He told me to go to Siloam and wash. So I went and washed and then I could see. Where is this man? They asked him. I don't know, he said. The Pharisees investigated the healing. They brought the Pharisees the man who had been blind. Now the day of which Jesus had made the mud open the man's eyes was a Sabbath. Therefore the Pharisees also asked him how he had received his sight. He put mud on my eyes, the man replied, and I washed. Now I see. Some of the Pharisees said, this man is not from God for he does not keep the Sabbath. But others asked, how can a sinner do such a miraculous signs? So they were divided. Finally, they turned again to the blind man. What have you to say about him? It was your eyes he opened. The man replied, He is a prophet. The Jews still did not believe that he had been blind and had received his sight until they sent for the man's parents. Is this your, is this your son? They asked. Is this the one who says, he says, wait a minute, is this the one you say was, you was born blind? How is it that now he can see? We know he is a, our son, the parents answered, and we know he was born blind. But how he can see now, or who opened his eyes, we don't know, asked him. He is of age, he will speak for himself. His parents said be, this because they were afraid of the Jews, for afraid of the Jews, for already the Jews had decided that anyone who acknowledged that Jesus was the Christ would be put out of the synagogue. That was why his parents said, He is of age, ask him. A second time they summoned the man who had been blind. Give glory to God, they said. Who, we know this man is a sinner. He replied, Whether he's a sinner or not, I don't know. One thing I know was, I was blind, now I see. Then they asked him, why did he do, what, what did he do to you? How did he open your eyes? He answered, I have told you already, and you did not listen. Why do you want to hear it again? 
Do you want to become his disciples too? Then they hurled insults at him and said, you are, the fellow, you are this fellow's disciple. We are disciples of Moses. We know that God spoke to Moses, but as for this fellow, we don't even know where he comes from. The man answered, Now, that is remarkable. You don't know where he comes from, yet he opened my eyes. We know that God does not listen to sinners. He listens to the godly man who does his will. Nobody has ever heard of opening the eyes of a man born blind. If this man were not from God, he could do nothing. To this, they replied, You stepped in sin at birth. You, you, you were steep in sin at birth. How dare you lecture us? And they threw him out. Jesus heard that they had thrown him out. And when he found him, he said, Do you believe this is the Son of Man? Who is he, sir? He asked. The, the man asked. Tell, tell me so that I may believe in him. Jesus said, You have now seen him. In fact, he is the one speaking with you. Then the man said, Lord, I believe. And he worshipped him. Jesus said, For judgment I have come into this world, so that the blind will see, and those who see will become blind. Some Pharisees who were with him heard him say this and asked, What? Are we blind too? Jesus said, If you were blind, you would not be guilty of sin. But now that you claim that you can see, your guilt remains. May the blessing of this scripture bless us at the present time. The scripture is important to us because this man who was born blind was, uh, in, was isolated because he was blind. He was isolated by society. He was isolated by a synagogue. He was isolated by his family. He was kicked out of a synagogue. This man is somebody who we can relate to, especially during this time. We feel very isolated from family and from friends at times, and at this time especially. We feel bad about it. We isolate people all the time. Even the disciples were trying to isolate him by saying, oh, he's a sinner, that, and his parents were sinning too. Which one was which? Disciples represent society and how society tries to isolate us from each other, whether we're poor and they isolate, us, isolate the poor from having voters' rights to sign up to vote because they're afraid that maybe they might have more power than other people, than they want. They isolate people. We isolate people who are sick, people who are handicapped, people who aren't like us, who might be sexually not like us. We isolate people because we don't want to be around them. Or we think they're sinners and we don't like them. We isolate people all the time in our society. And yet Jesus comes to him. The Pharisees isolate him from church. They isolate him because he was healed on a Sabbath. They missed the point. He was healed. All they cared about was that this was power and they didn't have control over it. And they were afraid of Jesus. And so they took it out on this poor blind man who they had just isolated by kicking him out of his synagogue, out of his church. Because he wasn't what they wanted or they thought he was still a sinner. They isolated him. Even his parents basically said, yes, he's our son, but we had nothing to do with him or this situation. Families isolate us also sometimes. Isolation is what we're going through right now. But in today's scripture, Jesus comes to the man and says to him, you are healed from your, from your blindness. He comes to the man twice because he is kicked out of his synagogue out of his church and he says I am the Christ the one who you are talking to the one who healed you you are connected to me you are not alone we are called to be like Jesus because it's so easy to be just like the man isolated but we are called to be like Jesus to help people to reach out to help people let them know they're not alone there's a story I read about how an elderly woman was was shopping the other day and the, the clerk asked her if she found everything and the woman said no they are out of bread and out of out of milk and out of toilet paper and I need those things 
And this man who checked out in front of her turned around and said, Ma'am, if you need some bread or milk or whatever, or toilet paper here, please have some of mine. That's what it means to be a Christian during this time of isolation. When given the opportunity, take it and help it and bring healing to people. Another story, it's an old story I've used before. A young man got in a car accident, was in a coma. And his family quit coming to see him on a regular basis because he wouldn't respond to them. And so this nurse, this night nurse, made it her job, her calling, to remind him that he was loved and that he was cared for. Because every night he would, she would say, to, say his name loud and tell him, God loves you and so do I. I'll see you tomorrow. Well, the young man finally came out of his coma after almost half of a year. And his family was asking him, what happened to you while you were in a coma? What did you hear? What were you thinking? And he said, the only thing I remember is this. The night nurse came into my room at night, called me by name, and told me that God loved me, and that she loved me too. That kept hope in me, and gave me the ability to hold on so that I could survive this coma. We are given opportunities now to reach out and help people. In a time of isolation, I know it's hard. But given those opportunities, may we do so. May we reach out with God's love and grace. May we realize that we are not alone. May we realize that we are loved and that we are cared for. That even though we might feel like we're isolated throughout our lives, I have felt that isolation myself being put back from third grade to second grade. It's an old story, I know. But I was isolated by, my, by the third graders and by the second graders because I was viewed as dumb and retarded. So I know what it feels like to be isolated by society. But those who came to me to, at my church, my father's church, Sheraton Christian Church, came to me and let me know I wasn't alone, that I was loved and I was cared for and I was accepted for who I am. So many times churches and church leaders can isolate and kick people out because they don't meet this criteria and they are theologically judged or abused. I know many people who have been that way. And they felt like, well, if that church doesn't love me, I guess no one else will. Well, this church does. This church accepts you for who you are, no matter who society says you are. You are loved and you are cared for. You are not alone. I'd like to read the Psalm 46 as my ending. God is our shelter and strength, always ready to help in times of trouble. So we will not be afraid, even if the earth shaken and mountains fall into the ocean depths, even if the seas roar and rage and the hills are shaken by the violence. There is a river that brings joy to the city of God, to the sacred house of the Most High. God is in that city and it will be, never be destroyed. And early dawn, God will come to its aid. Nations are terrified. Kingdoms are shaken. God's thunders and earth dissolves. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Come and see what the Lord has done. See what amazing things God has done on earth. God stops wars all over the world. God breaks bows and destroys spears and sets shields on fire. Stop fighting, God says, and know that I am God, supreme among the nations, supreme over the world. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. May we turn to God for the strength that we need in this time of change and the time of, of isolation. May we realize we're not alone. And may we help other people realize the same thing. And God's people said, Amen. Amen. The time came when Jesus and the disciples went to the upper room. He took a loaf of bread. He blessed it and he broke it and he said, This is my body which is broken for you. Take and eat. Do this in remembrance of me.
The same man after supper took a cup, he poured wine into it, and he blessed it. And he said, this is my blood to shed for you. And this is a new covenant in my blood that I am your Lord and you are my people. Take and drink. Do this in remembrance of me. Let us pray. Lord, as we take the cup and we take our bread, we pray that you bless us and help us to realize through these elements, we are not alone, that your presence is with us. May we feel that spirit as we partake in this bread and this cup. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please remember that the business of the church is still going on. And that please send in your offerings and your tithes so that the ministry can continue. May God bless those who have sent and will, will send it in to help further God's ministry through Ottawa First Christian Church. Amen. If you would like to join me for Bible study this coming Tuesday and Wednesday, we invite you to call in at 1-917-900-1022. Conference call ID is 469-186. That is Bible study at 1 o'clock. And that is Disciples Care Group at 6.30 on Wednesday. 1, one o'clock on Tuesday, 6.30 on Wednesday. So I invite you to do that as well. Like I said, everything is closed down here at the church. And we pray that when the time comes together, we will celebrate and enjoy each other's company. And until then, we will see you next Sunday via video on Facebook. It will be posted as soon as, it, as soon as Steve can get it on there. God bless you and God keep you. Stay well and may you share God's love and grace. In Jesus' name we pray and God's people said, Amen. Amen. Thank you.